How's it going, everybody? Facebook Livers! <laughs> this is Jose Trujillo. I am an artist and I'm here working with my lovely wife, Lisette Trujillo. Hi! I just wanted to make this quick little video uh, to talk about something that I uh, was, was thinking about. Yesterday, Lisette and I were talking about uh, artwork. We, we got into a little conversation as to what is the value of art. What is quality in art? What does it even mean when people say, oh, that's a lot of quality right there? Or, or, uh, or oh, that's very valuable. Well, you've got to tell them how the conversation began. The conversation began because many times throughout your career, people have tried to diminish the artwork by saying it's, you haven't maybe worked on it for as many hours as someone else did or... Right. Um, or the technique, or and really, we were talking about how art, like clothing, like makeup, like hair, all this stuff, it's subjective, right? Based on what the person likes and dislikes. And and you and I were talking about how n these napkins showed up in a Christie's auction. Napkins that who had drawn on them? <laughs> we had a I think Picasso and. I don't know, some of the other great ones uh, did some little drawings on, on, on napkins, which they paid for, you know, for whatever uh, services they were, they were doing. Right, they would use these napkins as currency. Here, I'm going to draw this one day. It's going to be worth money. Here yeah. you go. Take it as currency. And, and they can auction at, you know, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatnot. So and, he, now these napkin drawings are considered these high ticket commodities, right? Right. And so or, or those sketches that Matisse would carry around. Matisse used to carry a little notepad like this and I mean he would sketch anything and and uh, and if you auction that or you see those in auctions, I mean it's the the prices are just you know and people are like, well it's Matisse, it's Matisse, it doesn't matter who, who it is. You know, it, it does matter in the value of the of the market. But we're talking about the artwork itself. You know, so, go ahead, honey, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I just think it was, it was such an interesting kind of conversation to have because then it kind of throws the idea of quality... Out the window. Out, the, out of, you know, on its head. It kind of gives it a different... Right. Um, different meaning. Right. So, we... So, go ahead, sorry. No, you go. No, with thinking about that, I was just like, like, um... Why, why, as artists, we get stuck on this? And it doesn't matter what medium or what type of artwork you're doing, whether you're doing painting, photography, uh, I don't know, playing the guitar. Let's say you play the guitar and people are like, well, that's not, you know, it's only really quality when you can shred the guitar. But if you hear songs by, I don't know, uh, George Harrison, the Beatles, uh, he, he was very simple. His stuff was so simple that... that there was uh, hardly any, 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 uh, uh, not skill, but the skill as we know with guitarists, you know, finger picking really quick and, or, or moving up and down the fret, like what they call shredding and all this stuff. And, and if we think about it, we're like, oh yeah, but, but he's George Harrison. But so, he wasn't always George Harrison. And I think that that's the thing that we were talking about, about how really it comes down to the belief in how good you are. Are you good enough? Is this good enough? Um, and, and how many times when people talk to you about the quality of your work, they're talking about whether you're good enough to right. them. That's really what and it what means. And what does that mean? And, and how many times we stop ourselves from doing the things that we love because someone else told us we weren't good enough. Right. It's like uh, also something else, uh, the little dotted, spotted uh, drawings that Warhol did, you know, Andy Warhol. People look at it and they go, oh, that's, you know, it's so simple, blah, blah. But if you put it in, in the price of the market, it's this extraordinary prices, right? And, and, uh, so then that changes the perspective, like, oh, it's because it's Warhol, but it's the same work of art. So, so what is it? What, what is it that makes something valuable? Well, I've come into terms to understanding 
based on, on my experience and, and working here uh, with my wife on, on, on the artwork and shipping and all of this, seeing people get excited and pay um, a few hundred dollars. A few hundred dollars for, I don't know, for something like this, this size, an 8x10. Sometimes we see people pay even six, seven hundred dollars. They even go up that high. And then someone else says, you know what, for me, it's only worth 50 bucks. And we get that. And, and it could be the same painting, you know. So what, what makes it valuable? What, what is the value of, of the artwork? And what I've come, I mean, like, again, I'm going to step back. What I've come to realize is that, is that it really comes down to, first of all, the market doesn't need to dictate whether something is valuable or not. That's a whole different thing. But your artwork is as valuable as, as it is. If you are an artist who works hard and who, who uh, works on, on their craft and, and, uh, and constantly you're, you're pushing yourself, and this does not have anything to do with high levels of realism as so many people think, but it has to do with how deep you can go into your artwork. Uh, and how many people you can get to see your artwork? How, how, how many people you can get to be excited about what it is that you're working on and doing? Absolutely, right? which, which, is, which is the next part of it. Now the next part of, of, of the value, I believe it's, it's that, which my wife just, just mentioned right now. It's the market value. How many people, how many people not just know cherish, share, and purchase and exchange your artwork. And that really dictates the, the, the market value. And so many people think that in order for something to be shared, it has to be this labor intensive. Uh, you know, if it doesn't look like the statue of David, then no one wants it. That's not it, that's not true. It's not true at all. Now, art, for artwork to be valuable for the artist himself, I think uh, it comes down to vision. Like Picasso said, you know, it took me so many years. That's the way I see my work right now. Every time I create a new painting, uh, I don't see it as, oh yeah, it took me, I don't know, 10 minutes to do a small painting or 20 minutes or whatever. It took me that. I'm, what I'm thinking is, finally, after 20 years, I'm able to create this painting in this amount of time. This is the way I see it. So it, it really has different... Uh, dynamics, no, I guess, as to what value is, but it, but it, it's not the thing itself, no. Am I making any sense? No, you totally are. I was remembering the painting that you worked on for like seven months. Oh yeah. And um, had no market value. It had zero. Like you literally worked on it for seven months, a little bit every day, and it was beautiful. It was true impressionism. And literally, it went for $40. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw this big painting. I put it on auction. I told my wife, I worked on this for seven months. This is like, this is one of the best paintings I've ever done. It really you know? was. It was beautiful. I love that I painting. I was so upset. I carried it around like the, like the uh, Da Vinci's Mona Lisa. You know that, that he created this, uh, this layers, thin layers uh, that the Flemish painters use. It's called a... a, a uh, well, it's layers, but it's, but he called it sfumato, or they they call it sfumato, which is very thin layers of paint that creates sort of a smoky scene. Monet, I think, did that a lot uh, because his work wasn't necessarily plain air, although a lot of people think it is. He he did a lot of plain air back and forth between the studio and going outside, and that's how he was able to let it dry and create those that fogginess. Anyways, I did that for about seven months on a painting. I was so proud of it. I was like, you know what? If I auction this. And people were already buying my stuff. It wasn't like it wasn't like, like people didn't know where I was or where they could find me. So I was like, if I auction this, oh man, we're gonna make a killing, honey. <laughs> I'm so happy because because it really shows the best, you know, my best quality work and blah blah blah. So I go there and I'm and I get so excited. Well, the auction ends at I think it was like forty forty dollars, forty one dollars. Yeah. Whoever owns it owns a beautiful piece, and I'm so happy for them that they got such a deal, but seven months. So I don't, you know, so I worked on it for seven months, so, and then I worked on something like this for, I don't know. A half an hour. Half an hour at most, 
and not because I'm trying to rush through, through it or whatever. Some people have those that idea. It's because I've trained myself to, to, to capture what I need. And, and it, it, it took me years to learn how to do this. But I feel like you have, you've created a great eye to know when it's done. Yeah. Like, just to Absolutely. know when it's done. I, I feel like none of your stuff is overworked where, like, you, I think you have that confidence now where you're like, oh, it's, I feel it's finished. Oh, yeah. You know? Every work that I make, for me, is a masterpiece. I, I don't throw anything away. I don't repaint on it. It's, it's done because it's, it's taken me years to understand, to come to this point. Many years. And, and although I'm young, I started very young. I started painting when I was 14 years old. And it, it took me at least 20 years to get to, to, to this exact point where I'm at, where I, I paint anything and I feel so confident that, that it's done. I don't have to rework it. I don't feel like I need to, I need to overcompensate anything. I know what I'm doing and I feel that confidence. But, but sometimes, you know, I'll paint something like this and, and people will Go pay, crazy. you know, $300 plus for something like this. On an auction, on a on a, at a at a set price, I have it for four ninety five with a with a uh, a frame with a frame, and and they can they can also uh, counter offer back and forth, but but that's the the price four ninety four hundred ninety five dollars. But an auction, sometimes they go you know they go up to the roof and 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 or I get at least the price that I have it on the set price as a set price and. I'm always kind of baffled, like, what is it? What is it that people that people consider value? Well, you, you don't know what it is. You just don't know because... Well, because that's the beauty of art, right? It's subjective. It's it subjective. touches everyone differently, and, and, and it creates different feelings in everyone. That's really what it comes down to. But that's the moral of the story of the seven-month work that I'm painting. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know because it's subjective, because it's you. What, 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 what is it worth to you? And when you have a name like Picasso, Warhol, Batiste, or Monet, Van Gogh, any of those names, you're talking about the whole world. What does it mean to the whole world? So that's why you have these elevated prices. And, 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 you know, it's just the way it is. It's the market. Once people know more of me, then maybe the prices are, not maybe, the prices are going to substantially grow. But it doesn't mean that the work is less or more valuable. It just means that the world is now aware of it, the market. I'll leave you with that. My name is Jose Trujillo. Remember, you're always good enough. Don't let anyone else tell you different. Do not let anyone else. Absolutely.